In ancient Israel, God called specific individuals to be his messengers. That sounds like quite a call. Well, it is. But most of these messengers were asked to perform odd attention-getting acts and speak harsh words. Some were ridiculed and others hated. These were his prophets, chosen to speak on his behalf to the Jewish people. And one of them was... Shalom, I am Isaiah. That's one long beard. Isaiah wrote a book of prophecies included in the Hebrew scriptures. So, like the Bible? Yes, but just a portion of it. The Hebrew scriptures, also known as the Tanakh, would be what some refer to as the Old Testament. These scriptures tell a great story, from the world's creation to the early history of the Jewish people. Right. So what was Isaiah's book all about? Isaiah spoke to the present and predicted the glorious future God promised to the sons and daughters of Abraham. He announced God's message of hope brought in by the promised Messiah. He even wrote about his Messiah's future kingdom. You mean he foretold the future? Yes. And of those that have come to pass, his prophecies have proven to be 100% accurate. So we can conclude that the prophecies he foretold about the future will also come to pass. For example, in chapter 11, verse 6, Isaiah used these well-known words describing one aspect of what the future kingdom will be like. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. Not only will the nature of relationships with animals change, but people will no longer go to war when the Messiah sets up his glorious kingdom. Some refer to this future time period as the Messiah's second coming. Wait, a second coming must mean there is a first coming, right? That's right. And I was not the only Jewish prophet to talk about it. Something had to happen before world peace was possible. If you read what I write in chapter 53 of my book, you will see that the servant of the Lord, the Messiah, would have to die as a perfect sacrifice for your sins and mine. Isaiah clearly predicted this first coming in Isaiah chapter 53. So when will this promised first coming happen? It already happened. 700 years after Isaiah lived, Yeshua, Jesus, was born in Bethlehem. His life was well documented by first century Jewish people who believed he was the long-awaited Messiah. So you're saying the Messiah has already come? Yes, I'll show you. Let's compare Isaiah 53 with some verses from the New Testament. Both Christians and Jews recognize this document, translated into most of the world's everyday languages, to be one of the best sources for accurate historical information about first century Judaism. After all, all of the New Testament authors were Jewish with one possible exception. So as you compare these verses, you must ask yourself, does Yeshua fulfill this great prophecy? But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. It is a historical fact that he was crucified by the Romans and died. There were too many witnesses to suggest it was a lie. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all the land until the ninth hour. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, in other words, the servant's sacrifice pays the penalty for our sins, and now we're able to have peace with God if we believe in him? That's right. He is our true atonement and does for us what we can never do for ourselves. As the Jewish apostle John, who was a Jewish early follower of Jesus, wrote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let us compare another huge detail. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Notice that after being crushed as a guilt offering, he has to yet prolong his days, dead yet alive. And this is what it says in Matthew. 
He is not here, for He is risen, as He said. The Messiah not only died for our sins, but He also rose from the grave as predicted. God is good and has a plan to create a new relationship between God and each one of us. It's all about having a personal and intimate relationship with God. But for this to happen, we need our sins to be forgiven because they keep us from God. God promised to send a Messiah to die for our sins. And Yeshua fulfills this prophecy of Isaiah chapter 53. He is the spiritual leader and Messiah we have been looking for. It is time for us to believe. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? What about you? Do you believe this time-tested story? We believe it is true. Do you? Are you searching for a personal relationship with God? Yeshua himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. These messianic prophecies from Isaiah and the other prophets are signposts along the road to everlasting life. Want to know more? Request your free book at isaiah53.com forward slash free. Again, that's isaiah53.com forward slash free. Or you can simply ask God yourself if Jesus is the promised Messiah and by faith embrace him as your Lord and Messiah.